too. Well, today I'm going to show how to take a cane dining room chair, take the caning off, and upholster it. A lot of people ask me uh, about caning these days, and um, I tell them I don't do caning, but there's another solution to that if they have uh, caning that's been caved through, which is in the case of this, that they can upholster. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are with a beautiful frame that to work on. I mean, what makes it beautiful is the woodwork has done its job here. And this is a beveled frame, so it comes into the chair really nicely, really clean. So that's what you're looking for in a slip seat, if you, if you can. These are high-end chairs, you can tell, every time it's beveled like this. So what happens is when it's put into the chair, the fabric seems to just disappear into the wood. It's a good, what we call a good transition line. So um, here, again, the, the canning was removed. Okay, now the trick, it, tr trick to these seats is not to overstuff them. Um, of course, these were understuffed. So what, what was on here before was just a piece of plywood that they put over this and a piece of Dacron over that. That's, that's understuffed. And I don't like the idea of the wood. Uh, we're gonna be using our traditional webbing, which believe it or not, provides just enough of a trampoline effect to make them more comfortable, really. So let's get going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this side and I'm gonna stay with it. Put about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or, or seven, eight, or nine staples, two rows of staples. Okay, I'm gonna use my webbing stretcher. You've seen these on other videos. And I'm gonna get drum tight. Put five staples here, release the stretcher. Cut it off, and then another four or five staples on top. Okay, again, I'm gonna start here. Stretch, drum tight. Four or five more staples. I'm going to turn this. I'm going to under over. We're going to weave this. Drum tight. one and if you had a sofa so on all the way down the end tight nothing like the traditional way of upholstering um, this method that we're using is hundreds of years old and in my opinion, they have not been able to improve on it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put some burlap. And the burlap's purpose is to fill in these holes. So if you didn't use the burlap, folks, and we go down the padding all the way up to the fabric, a couple of years, you'll have what, you, you could play checkers on the top of the slip seat. It'll be checkerboard. Okay, it'll look like a checkerboard because, of, because the padding's falling through in these openings. So you want to avoid that. Burlap especially is a material. No other material works as well as burlap, by the way. Again, a proven method with a hundred year, hundreds of year tradition in upholstery. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold one side, stay put. I'm going to use the other side for my hand stretch. Get rid of your webbing stretch. You don't need that anymore. This is a hand stretch. Another thing I love about the traditions of upholstery, right? I even like this little extra piece of burlap. That's fine, it's a natural material. So I'm going to stretch, staple, stretch, staple, stretch, staple, stretch, staple, stretch, staple. Then you're going to fold this over after you've stretched it. Okay, you can trim this up a little bit, a little oversized. So in my other videos, like the U cover video, you'll see just how much to cut all these materials. 
So I'm going to take one side and I'm going to fold it and staple it about every two inches. And then I'm going to stretch it to the opposite side. So always just stretch, 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 stretch. And then fold it over. So we've got the makings of a nice little slip seat, nice traditional slip seat. So believe it or not, that trampoline effect is much better than having a wood piece in there. It makes a difference. I wouldn't think so. It's just a small difference, but um, adequate. Okay, so you might be surprised at the next step. We are, the customer and I have spoken about what we're going to do, and she wanted some, you know, more than what it was. So we settled on a one inch piece of foam. Uh, but you don't simply put the one inch, it's a way of doing everything, and you just don't put it over the burlap. Okay, what you need to do, this is a little trick. You want to you take a piece. It can be Dacron or it can be cotton. Okay, what this is, it's going to be, a, I, this is about a six inch by six inch cut piece. Okay, but what that's going to do is that's going to make up the difference of the air pocket that will be developed once we put the foam, foam on. That's very important because you don't want to have the feeling like you're, you're, you're collapsing on something. That'll actually fill that air pocket. That's a good tip for all of you beginners. You don't learn that anywhere else in a book or anything. That's learned through um, traditional uh, methods of teaching. And, and something like that is probably passed down in hundreds of years of the tradition of upholstery. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my foam. I'm not simply going to cut this foam to size. I, I, what I usually do is I'll staple a good edge on. I'm going to staple the front edge on. And then it's, the reason I don't like cutting, pre-cutting oftentimes is that you might end up being too short, too small on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to put this on. I filled that pocket up nicely, that air pocket. And now um, I'm going to stay to the top of the frame because these sit inside the frame. You don't want to bring your padding over on something, a slip seat that sits within the frame. Be very careful. The only thing coming over the edge is going to be the fabric because it's already a very tight fit with nothing on it. So each slip seat, slip seats are different. Every slip seat's different the way it's done. So you have to really pay attention to the on top. And I'm right up at the top of where the, the wood has been beveled. So I'm going to turn this all over. I'm going to give it a little stretch, and I'm going to cut it. That little stretch is important, you'll see. Okay, so you see that looks small, but I'm going to stretch it and staple. I'm going to go to one side. That's cut even, and then staple. Now the other side should be, I'm gonna give it, yeah, I don't have to really stretch this before I cut it. It's really my, right where I want it to be. And we have just completed the padding over a cane seat. Okay, from here, we're not going to go to the upholstery today. I was just showing you how to stuff the seat. You can check out some of my other videos if you want to see uh, things upholstered. But um, right now, this is ready to be um, cottoned or dacroned over the foam and the fabric. Now, the choice is yours, folks. A lot of times it's based on the fabric. If you have a heavy upholstery fabric, you want to use cotton. If you have a lighter fabric, especially a fabric you can see through, you want to use Dacron. The reason for that is cotton has cotton seeds. Even the finest cotton has seeds. It's an organic material. It has seeds you'll be able to see through. And some of some of the lighter weight fabrics you can actually see, you know, if you can't see them physically with your eyes, you can actually see bumps. So you want to be careful of the material you use under your fabric. So you're good to go. Thanks YouTube. I'm in front of the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum in beautiful downtown Arlington.